Hi there, so I'm still waiting on parts for the part 2 of the bandsaw build but in the meanwhile I wanted to show you how I made these little knobs here. This episode is going to be concentrating on how I milled these. So these are milled from two sides, I milled them from the top and I milled them from the bottom. So I'm going to be showing you how I did that on the machine and how to align everything up so stay tuned. Okay, so I'm still waiting for parts on the bandsaw and I just wanted to make some little knobs so that I can remove the cover without any tools. And that is what this episode is going to be concentrated on. What we're going to be making are some of these here. They're little, uh, little hand knobs and basically I've got one here without the bolt and they are milled from the bottom and also the top because you see we have the little hex uh, cut out for the bolt on the top. So they're milled from both sides. And in this episode I'm going to show you how I reference it when I turn it over. Okay, so I'm just going to jump straight into it and you will see these are the knobs that we're going to be making. I've got two different versions. I've got an M8 one over here and an M6. So I'll just go over the design quickly, but there's not a lot to them really. They've got on the back here, they've got a little square section where you can put uh, either a, a 10 millimeter or a 30 millimeter spanner on. They've also got a little ridged area around here to better grip them with your hand. And they've got a slot for the head of the nut and obviously the different size dimensions holes in the middle for the bolts. Now I want to make 10 of these so the first thing I did was I copied that design and made a layout that I can cut them on the machine and you can see I've got 10 of each different knob. So the first operation we're going to need to do is we're going to have to flip it over and we're going to be milling this square, this surface here and this contour around the edge here. So this is the material I'm going to be using and this is it's called HDPE, high density polyethylene. It's fairly easy to cut and fairly easy to work with. So for the first operation I'm just going to screw this down to the CNC and run the program that we just looked at. So after all that machining I cleaned up the parts and now that is the underside done. The only part we need to do now is the top. For that we're going to go back into Fusion and I'm going to explain how we do it. And now we've got the parts milled I'm going to need a way of referencing the top side to get it to the same alignment as the bottom here. And I'm going to use these square tabs here that we've got for the spanners. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to have a jig and if I turn one of the parts off you will see on the bottom here we've got a hole where that can fit in and I've made the holes if you look in between the two sections there it's hard to see but I've made these holes slightly bigger and I'm going to use a stock to leave command in the machining tab to get them to the exact size and in reality this part of the jig here is just going to be a section of my table which I select to mill these two little holes in and that is going to be the next stage so if we go over to the machining tab 
we can set up the, the machining process. Okay, and this is what I came up with. So basically it's two little pockets and we've just got a 2D pocket operation that's just going to mill out them little holes there. So we jump over to the CNC and get them cut. So the trick here before we do the next step is going to be to get these parts to fit perfectly in them holes. And as you can see mine fit perfectly already. They don't move while they're in there and they're just perfect. That's exactly how we need it. If we needed to change them ever so slightly now is the time to do it. You can use the uh, stock to leave command in Fusion to make the holes um, bigger. And in this case, I've actually decided because the parts fit so well, I'm not going to fix them down with any screws or anything. I'm just going to leave them as they are. They take a lot of force to lift them up. And that one I can sort of lift out, but it takes quite a bit of force. So I don't think the cutter is going to be able to move these. And this is going to be the next section that we're going to do. You can see I've got the jig now and I've got the two knobs up here. You can see I've modified the knob up here slightly and I've allowed for the cutter to cut the corners of the hex bolt out. The one on the 6mm bolt, I've not allowed it to do that because there wouldn't be any of this surface left for the head to reference to. You see here I've still got this flat area where the head can reference to. And the trick to flipping parts over like this is to use the same reference point. I'm going to have to make a new setup here, but I still can use this same XY origin and the Z axis is going to be set to this plane here. So it's going to be the top of the knobs. So let me just do that quickly and then I will show you what we've got once it's all done. So now the cam work's done and I just want to place extra emphasis on the fact that this origin here of the previous operation where we milled the two holes is directly below the new origin of this machining operation that I've just uh, made. So the Z axis is the only axis that's going to be changed and I'm going to re-zero it on the top of these surfaces here. And if I open the tab you will see that I've got a pocketing operation to mill out the, the heads of the nuts. Then there's a drilling operation to drill this one here because this is a 6mm hole and I'm using a 6mm end mill. And then there's a pocketing operation at the back here. I'm using the 6mm end mill to do an 8mm hole so it's making a, it's doing a spiral down there. And then I'm just going to face the surfaces and that's going to get rid of the half a mil uh, extra material on the top that we left over on the previous operation. Okay, and again now you have another opportunity to make any adjustments obviously you're going to be wasting parts here but as I can see already this circle here is pretty much round and the bolt doesn't fit in it that is because I'm using a 6mm cutter and I wanted to keep this project simple using the same cutter for every operation and a 6mm cutter is just too big to cut that hole so I'm gonna to have to change the cutter this one here the bolt fits in but it's a little loose for my liking so i'm going to change the code to accommodate for that as well so this is the new and improved design as you can see i've made a couple of changes here i've added uh we first of all we're using a different end mill so if i go in here you can see up here i'm using a three millimeter end mill and that is for all of these operations so i've changed these circles in the corners here to accommodate for a 3mm end mill and not a 6mm. I've also added them down here as well. Now we have the same operation here. The one thing I've changed 
is because I wanted the, the bolts to fit in a little bit better. I've added a stock to leave, it's leaving three tenths around the edges, make them a bit tighter. Other than that, it's pretty much the same. We have the same origin as before, and all I'm gonna do is change out the cutter, re-zero the z-axis, and run the same code. So after cleaning them all up, we end up with parts that look sort of like this. And the actual nut that goes in the top here is a bit of a tight fit, which is good. I just used a hammer to, to hammer them in and they are really snug. They are not, they're not going to come out. They're really tight on there. I did obviously M6 and M8. The thing I really like about these is the ability to put a spanner on the, tar on the side here. So we've got the, uh, the square section on the bottom here and I can just push an M10 uh, thing on there and it fits on there nice and snugly and I can use that to now really tighten it up if I want to or loosen it off if I need to. And obviously the M6 have a 10 millimeter uh, thing on the bottom and these have a 13 mil on the bottom. Okay, so I hope all this was of interest to you and if it was, be sure to drop a, a comment down below and let me know what you would have done differently. There's obviously loads of different ways you can do this. This is just how I did it in this scenario. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.